worship God and praise his holy name. As we enter into the sanctuary, sanctuary, we will. Wake! 
And today and forever. Mark the 16th chapter, 15th verse. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they. Cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. John 14 and 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father whatever you ask in my name i will do it that the father may be glorified in the son if you ask anything in my name i will do it may the lord is blessing to his red room look at somebody say thank god for Jesus. Wave your hand and glorify him again. Say thank God. That he sits on the right hand. Of God. The side of power. Amen. Look at somebody say he's an ageless God. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I, I, I guess I. He's ubiquitous. It means he changes not. One of the attributes and one of the characteristics or one of the side characters of God, part of God's character, he's ubiquitous. He changes not. In other words, now I didn't say he does not may not change his mind. But the same way that he worked before and the same presence and the same power 
and these things that were written from Genesis to Revelation, uh, we act like we, we haven't discovered nothing new. In the middle of the book, Solomon, the wisest man, said, there's nothing new under the sun. You don't have no new style. Tight pants. They wore stole pipe pants a long time ago. No dress on. That, that ain't nothing new. He was born naked. Amen. Um, showing your, showing your, your style, uh, uh, low cut. Uh, uh, the Greek ain't nothing new. The Greek uh, senators wise uh, sat up in the House of Senate with uh, bare breast and and uh, and uh, 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 and having your buttocks out and wearing a thong. Uh, uh, they did the Olympics, men and women, butt naked. You ain't got nothing new. But it's good to realize that Jesus, representing God, Jesus was, for 33 and a half years, was a walking example. He was very God and very man. And so in the Hebrew letter, when they say Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, that means that there never was a time when God was powerless. Then there was a time when God was old. And the reason they said Jesus, because we must realize that we are serving a person who said that I am going to lay this body down. I came from the Father. He said, once I was in the beginning. Now that's as far back as we can go. I'm not talking about the beginning of your life. I'm not talking about the beginning of the 16th century or the 20th century. I'm not talking about the beginning of civilization in China or in Africa. Wherever the beginning was, whether it was eons or millions or, or thousands of years ago, before there was a where and a when, there was God. Now, I know we can't understand that, but we need to understand this, that nothing from nothing needs nothing. So I don't care how much you multiply and and send spores and, and make big bangs and make a whole lot of noise. Uh, there had to be something to start something. Uh, so we're here. And it's very obvious that there had to be life in order to bring life. I want to try to get us to see that it's important that we realize that we, I used to wonder, I said, I wish, in the early part of my ministry, I said, I, I wish that I had been, you know, may, I wish I had been a disciple. Yeah. I, may, I wish that, you know, that may, I could have been born back there. Yeah. May, maybe he would have chosen me to be a Matthew, or, yeah. or maybe he would have chosen me, but, but, or maybe I could have been the, you know, a follow along disciple, yeah. you know, a pseudo disciple, a yeah. substitute disciple, yeah. a one in the midst. You know, Jesus had a lot of people that followed him other than the 12. Uh, but when, when, when it came down to brass tacks, one day he, was, he had fed 5,000 people, 15,000 at the minimum, counting their families. Another time he fed 4,000 people, a minimum of 12,000. And, and, and then uh, uh, they gathered again, following him by the thousands. And uh, so he said, I'm not going to feed you this time, but I'm going to feed you. He said, uh, 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 you're going to feed it, but you're not going to feed it. He said, I'm going to give you some bread. They said, where is that? He said, uh, 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 bread from heaven. They said, that'll do. Where is it? We want to see it. He said, I am the bread. They said, what? He said, eat up my flesh and drink of my blood. They said, what? What's up? He crazy. I don't see no wonder bread. I don't see no wholesome bread. I don't see no crackers. He won't, he, he, he won't take my fish dinner and multiply it something wrong. And the Bible says they all left him and followed him no more. Now that didn't mean that nobody followed him. But at that time when all that crowd just looking for fishes and loaves left him, his 12 said, well... Jesus looked at them sadly and said, you going to leave me also? Peter had sent enough to say, where are we going to go? Some more began to follow him, but a few months later, at the cross, at the cross, 
the same new crowd and the same old crowd looked at him and said, though he had fed like a groceryman without food stamps, though he had fed like a groceryman without having a Piggly Wiggly or a Kmart, without having a Harris Teeter or a Winn Dixie or a Kroger's or a and he fed what they needed. But when it was time for him to, someone the speaker said, don't let him die. They said, kill him, crucify him. Now I want us to realize that to say that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, we need to examine what did he do? I used to wonder, I said, I wish, you know, and I said, well, I wish that maybe I had been one of those little children. Or when my children came along years later, I said, I wish that, you know, that Jesus was here so I could bring my children. He could lay his hands on them uh, and bless him. I just believe that when Jesus laid his hands on those little children uh, that were crowding around him, that if someone had palsy, I mean, it doesn't say that, but maybe some of them were crippled. Maybe some of them had polio. Maybe some of them had cerebral palsy. Maybe some of them you know, had a, uh, you know, um, alcohol fetal syndrome. Maybe some of them had diseases, crippled on crutches, uh, and malnutrition, and, and something wrong with them. But when he laid hands on them, I believe just as he laid hands on adults, he healed them. You see, we must realize that when they say Jesus Christ the same yesterday, the scriptures that were read in your hearing let us know he promised that though I'm going back to heaven, I'm still not out of business because I was there in the beginning. Everything that you see, see, in the beginning, I was with God and I was God. And everything that you see, I had to speak into existence. So if I could speak it into existence before I came and put on a fleshly body, I'm going back and so I can still speak into existence. Uh, when he was here, he let us know that, look, here, I made this body and I can heal it. Uh, and when you look at some of the miracles that Jesus did, there were 34 or 35 times recorded in the scriptures that he did miraculous things. Uh, Sometimes we look at it and it may say 35 miracles, but that's really a wrong reading because they really should say there were 35 times recorded. There were more than 35 times that Jesus did miraculous things. John said if every time that he did a miracle by one or by two or by hundreds or by thousands, uh, if they all had been recorded, he said, there wouldn't be enough books. In three and a half years, Jesus was working 24-7. Uh, Jesus didn't just do miracles on Wednesday. They didn't say the doctor's in on Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock, and, uh, and, uh, but he had midnight shifts. He, he had 24-7. People came to him all the time. But 35 times are recorded when miracles happen. At one of those times, there were thousands of people of all kinds of diseases. One time he said he looked at the multitude. He looked at thousands and thousands of people, and no one asked for healing. Uh, they were there gathered. And Jesus looked at the crowd, and instead of preaching them, he said his, he just had compassion on them. And he just began to walk among them. Some began to touch him and to clutch at him, and he just began to touch people, and everybody that he touched was healed. It's still the same Jesus. Uh, I, just because he's invisible now, he was invisible in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, did we not see that it was Jesus? Paul teaches us in the New Testament. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. In the, in, in the Old Testament, the New Testament is in there concealed. In the Old Testament, the New Testament is in there, but it's concealed. In the New Testament, the Old Testament is in there, but the Old Testament is revealed. In the New Testament, do you hear me? So Jesus was back there. Paul said, that rock that Moses struck, that was Jesus. When they walked through the Red Sea uh, and, and they were saved by water, that was Jesus. Uh, the, the, uh, so trying to get us to see that if we need a miracle today, he's still doing it. Now, it's one thing to make up in your mind you want something. Another thing to say you need something and don't have a promise. But this book gives us a promise that whatsoever you ask in my name, I just, let's look at the, some things the scripture they read. Some people look at the 16th chapter of Mark, or without looking at everything that they don't read it, 
And you hear people, they call themselves theologically correct. You hear preachers, you hear pastors, you hear saints, you hear Sunday school teachers, uh, you hear sometimes great theologians claim that healing stopped when the last apostle died. Which means, you know, and they read the scriptures, uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, the last verses in the 13th chapter. Oh, yeah, you're going to hear it. Uh, you can go to Bible colleges and hear it. Uh, you can sit around on the radio, on TV, and hear it. Uh, they'll claim that Benny Hinn and uh, Catherine Kuhlman and Bishop Patterson, anybody else that lay on hands and claim that people get healed uh, or, or church, they say that, that, they'll say it's the devil. They say he's jiving people. They say he's a, he, he, he's, a, he's a fraud. It ain't happening. They just hypnotize people. They had a great big show, one hour, blasting Benny Hinn. That wasn't the first time they had it on, uh, claiming that uh, people like Holyfield, Holyfield, that I saw a video of his life, and it showed him laying out in a white suit when Benny Hinn just touched him. He laid out there for a long time. He came to the meeting because doctors hired by the Boxing Association had said, you cannot box anymore. Uh, you're, you're something wrong with your heart. Uh, X-rays and, and different cartograms showed that he had a heart condition. He could not box anymore, but someone carried into Benny Hinn. He touched him, laid out. He went back to the same doctors, and the doctor said, you can box again. He was out a few months but uh, you know, before he went there, but uh, they had to give him a clean bill of health. And then these antichrist people, these TV medias, uh, spend money by the millions to tell a damnation lie, looking at the miracles and claiming that, the, oh, 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 well, it looks like that they were here, but they wasn't really here because the doctors had it wrong in the first place. Every time they cannot dispute that a healing took place, then they claim, no, no healing took place because healing can't take place. The age of miracles is over, they say, because when the last apostle died, there was no one around to practice healing. See, some of these people don't even believe that Jesus walked on the water. Some of them don't believe that Jesus uh, touched bread and made uh, fed 5,000 people. Some of them don't believe that he died on the cross for any reason. Some just think he was a messianic, uh, he had a messianic complex. He was just a religious fanatic fool. Uh, he just had a, he just had some kind of, uh, uh, he had some kind of brain damage, you know. You know, after all, you know, crazy Mary birthed him and he, his mama was crazy and, and because he claimed that she was a virgin and then his dad, his stepdaddy, uh, was crazy for marrying her, so uh, and he grew up around crazy, so could he couldn't help but be crazy, and he thought. But I, I got evidence. Uh, I know I wasn't there, but Jesus said this in the 16th chapter: said, "These signs, uh, the same thing I'm doing now. Uh, I, I, these signs shall follow them that believe." So it's bunk to me. It's pigeon dung to me whether or not people say, well, I don't see it happen. You need to be around people that believe. It's not going to happen for you except by faith. And it's very evident that people are still being healed. Now, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, this is my evidence that I was here, that I was real, that what is written down about me, it happened then. I know you wasn't there, but to prove that it happened then, I'm going to let it happen again. And these signs shall follow not just the 12, all that they preach to and believe what they say. I believe that you shall ask in my name and believe that these signs shall follow them. You shall lay hands on the sick. So it's not something that we're doing trying to show off. It's not something that we are claiming. We're not claiming that we are healers. He said, I will heal people like I did in the past because I'm still the same. I have not lost my power. I have not lost my touch. Uh, in the days gone by, people did not depend on medicine. 
There were people that had leprosy. Uh, there were people that had all kinds of cancers. It may not have said cancer, but at that time, they did not have thick medical books. Uh, a lot of the diseases, they had no names for them. But leprosy was a disease that could not be cured by medical science of that day. We still have diseases. They cannot be cured. Uh, I was reading, we think that because chemotherapy is on the scene and because people have radium and, and uh, Madame Curie dis discovered radium and they get chemotherapy, but some people that have cancer still die of chemotherapy. Sometimes the chemotherapy being so powerful kills them because the chemotherapy, it kills cells. And they try to get as close to just the cancer cell, but cancer cells don't come in no neat little square. They don't come in those neat little circles, and so you can just focus on that. So sometimes at the best that they do is not only killing cancer cells, they hope, but it's also killing good cells. But they risk, they say, well, if we don't kill these cancer cells, eventually these cancer cells are going to take over and kill all the good cells, so they're going to die anyway. And what it is about chemotherapy, you need a miracle because you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. You, if the, y'all ain't hear me. If the chemotherapy kills too many good cells, then the cancer gets ahead of the because of the chemotherapy. Or with cancer cells, I'm glad. I can get ahead. I don't have to, you don't, the body doesn't have to wait until the cancer cells get there and kill it. The chemotherapy is helping me. So many times you're helping out the cancer to grow because you're killing good cells and the cancer is taking over. And then I was looking at uh, uh, the uh, hospital and they were talking about there was a little boy, St. Jude Hospital, and, they, and he, he came up with a new cancer, a little boy uh, that a cancer started in his leg up around his groin area and went down this way. They said, they didn't even have a name for this new cancer. It just started in his groin area. A little boy, and it's, it, it didn't go up this way. It went down that way. It twisted his leg, and they tried their best, but he died a couple of years later at the best medical practice. But Jesus healed all manner of diseases. And he said, these signs shall follow me because I am the same. Just because I'm not there, I still can touch you. Uh, just because I'm, I'm not there, there's still I can bring you all your medicine in your room. Uh, just because uh, I, I am invisible does not mean I'm not real. Come on here now. Invisible does not mean it doesn't exist. Uh, the wind is invisible, but we, we feel the east wind, and, and we identify the north wind, and we identify the pleasant southern south winds, and yet and still some food. Oh, yes, the Bible says a fool, uh, a fool has said in his heart, yeah, the, a fool, I don't care how high your IQ is. I don't care how much philosophy you have. I, I don't care how much Plato or Aristotle you know. I don't care how much Pythagoras theories you know. I don't know how, I don't care how much med medical terminology you know. Only a fool can look at the human body 206 bones or maybe 208 bones for somebody over 600 different muscles how can you look at that man can't make another man nothing from nothing need nothing it takes something to produce something somebody say something from something we'll produce something there ain't no God there there ain't no be no man here they look at me. I am the image of God. How we know the image of God? The Bible says God had creative power. How do we know that we are made in the image of God? We can kiss and go through certain practices and create life. We can create God, looked at us, and made life and you are like God. Now make no mistake, when I get to heaven, I'm going to see Jesus. I'm going to see what color his eyes are. The Bible says in closing, in the, uh, John writing his last letter before he wrote the book of Revelation, said we shall see him. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he shall appear, when whatever time he rings down the curtain, 
Whatever time, as tempest fugit time flies, whatever time, I don't know how soon it's going to be, but I do know that we're in the last hours. We're in the last minutes of the last days. Soon and very soon, we're going to see our king. Soon and very soon, we're going to join the heavenly host. Soon and very soon, we'll be out of gunshot of the hellhound. Soon, all the troubles of this world will be over soon. I shall have the answer to every question. If his hair is like an afro, I'll know. If his hair is blonde, I'll know. If his face is red, I'll know. If he's six foot tall or five foot five, I shall see him as he is. And the thing of it is, the glory thing, whatever he looks like, that's what we're going to be. We shall be just like him. Just like him means that he came, he died, he arose, and then he appeared during a 40-day period with a resurrected body. The first time that he appeared, they said they were standing there with the doors locked on the first Sunday that he arose. Uh, that's, why we, that's why we have church on the Lord's Day instead of the Sabbath day. No disrespect. If you want to worship on the Sabbath day, worshiping Jesus, fine. I don't have no conflict with it. But we worship in the early, the early church changed it from worship on the Sabbath day because they were no longer Jews. And they, it was called the Lord's day, the one that the Lord chose. He chose to rise on a Sunday. He chose to appear. The three or four times that he appeared, every time he appeared after he rose, was, oh, it was not on a Saturday he never appeared on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday. He always waited until the day he wrote. Every time he appeared, it was on a Sunday. Uh -huh. It's counted off. He appeared the first time, and it tells you how many days later, eight days later, he appeared again, Sunday again. So this is why we worship him. Now, when he appeared, they said, door is locked. He didn't crawl under the door. He didn't creep through the keyhole. He didn't knock. They were just there moaning that what we going to do. Peter said, I believe I'll go back to fishing. Thomas wasn't even there. Thomas said, ain't no use. I don't know why y'all going out there. I leave this day. It's Thomas. I don't know what Thomas was doing. I guess he laid in bed and said, I don't feel like going to church this morning. We can't have no church because Jesus ain't there, you know. And, and, and he wasn't even there. And all of a sudden they jumped and they said, touch me. So we're going to be just like him. We're going to have solid bodies. We're going to know each other. Uh, and he's going to know us. And we're going to know him. Now, the greatest thing that he just saying yesterday, that these signs shall follow them. Now, when you look and see that people are healed today. Now, I grew up and I was preaching and I never denied the fact that God could heal. Because, see, I believe that he's still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Now, some people had me confused because I felt like that God did not work any longer through the hand of man. Looking right at this here, he's saying they shall, in order for the healing to take place, they shall lay hands on the sick. Uh, and they shall recover. I need, when I was here, uh, healing took place because I touched them. Very few people had faith to forget their healing without being touched. All right. All right. And you want to know he's still the same yesterday because a foreigner woman came to him. A chief sinner woman came to him. When he was around Tyre and Sidon, very wicked cities, when he was around Las Vegas and Reno, in that area, Tyre and Sidon, uh, uh, Las Vegas and Reno, when he was in that area, uh, 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 New York and California, when he was in that area, uh, he was getting ready to leave, but a Canaanite woman, not a Jew, came and said, I, I missed you, uh, and they told me you went that away, and I caught up with you. I, I needed not to be in there because I was, cause they might laugh at me, but you here with just your disciples, and so I want you to do me a favor. I left a, a, a daughter back home. She's crazy. Uh, she got bad nerves. Uh, she's got a nervous condition, and 
they have not invented, you know, any of these here nerve medicines, you know. Uh, and I don't know what to do. And, and I do know this, that whatever is troubling her, whatever is vexing her, whatever is making her nervous, it's got to be a devil. Amen. He said, I, I just want you to see that she's healed. The woman had so much faith, he didn't say, please come back here. I don't know why you left. She said, you just speak the word. Uh, you just let me know. You just tell me that she's healed. And I'll go back home and believe she's healed. And Jesus gave her the little test. You know, he said, well, look here. I just came to these people, my people. And she, she said, well, uh, and, and, and looked like he called a dog, and he did. Because she said, I came to the children of Israel, to the children. And she said, well, even the puppy dogs eat the crumbs. Amen. And Jesus agreed with her. Oh, she let her know that the reason that my daughter is crazy, because I've been crazy. The reason that my daughter is crazy, because she's been hoeing around, because I've been hoeing around. Uh, the reason that she's all upset because she got pregnant and had an abortion. Uh, the reason that she is upset is because she found out she's got some dread diseases. The reason she's upset because one of them boyfriends of mine raped her. And, uh, and she has a, I, I, I don't know to call it a complex and all like that guilt complex, but something wrong with her. She can't eat, she can't sleep, and she's doing crazy things, climbing the wall. It, but you just speak the word. And she looked at the fact, she said, I don't care what you call me, just do something for my daughter. I don't care what I've been. I don't know why we stumbled that because some of us know we were a dog. It's no new thing now that crazy young folk call their best friend a dog. I ain't by why I'm behind that stuff. I ain't no dog. I'm a child of the king. I resent the fact that they say I came from a monkey. I, darling, I'm sorry. And I resent the fact that black people go around talking about my dog. Don't call me no dog. I ain't going to bite you, but you're going to act like, you know, me looking at me talking about it's a friendly term. Mm -mm, a dog is just a dog. A dog will lick anything. A dog will screw anytime, anywhere, any place. dog don't know nothing about kinship. dog don't know that that, that grown dog used to be his puppy. Y'all ain't hear me. dog don't have no book that says that's incest. When you see a dog and smell it in heat, then he just goes to town. Y'all ain't hear that. He don't wait to go to no hotel sick. He just go to town. So don't be calling me no dog in no friendly term. But Jesus is still the same. How is he still the same? That I don't care how low down you may have been. I don't care how much sin you did and how long you did it and who you did it with. Jesus looked at the woman and said, I've seen your great faith. Any time that you can come to God's house and take in, so you know, sometimes, oh yeah, you can feel bad when you get to talk about the sins that you've done. But see, look beyond the guilt and realize it. We, you, in order to get forgiveness, you must feel guilty. And then, when you feel guilty, I got a remedy for feeling guilty. If you repent of your sins, ain't no use leaving out of here talking about I feel so guilty. Because every time I come to the house, uh, uh, they naming sins. Uh, they talking about stealing, and they talking about wheeling and dealing, and, and they talking about fornication and adultery, and talking about lesbian homosexuality, and they talking about cursing and talking about gambling. Uh, I also want to know I talk about gossiping, and I talk about peace breaking, mm, talk about reading one another, and teasing and dirty joking all in the same book but if you feel guilty don't leave out feeling guilty you come to the church to get your sins forgiven you come to the church to get your guilt washed away 
uh, you go to court downtown uh, and, and you feel bad because now you come in knowing you're guilty. I don't care how much you lie and how much you paid the lawyer to do a legal lie. If he's a lawyer, he can lie. He can lie because he was trained seven years to lie and the court re recognizes his lie. Tell him the truth. You pay him to tell a lie. If you tell a lie, you will be called perjured or you say you're lying and you get thrown in jail for lying. But if the lawyer lies, you pay him his money. He can lie legally. But you still might be guilty. And you still might can plea bargain and get some time, a little bit of time. But if you come to Jesus, just as I am, without one plea, if this woman who was, had been a dog had done everything that dogs do, uh, and, and if she could get healing for her child, then we can get healing today. Jesus, without going there and touching her, Jesus being real said, I don't have to be there. And I'm so glad that he does not have to be here, but it's very evident that sometimes he needs a touch. Some people have great faith. Everybody don't need to be touched, but most people need a touch. More people need a channeler. More people need somebody to, for God to send his power through. Y'all don't hear. If it had not been, if they had not known, if it, had, if it were not so, then Jesus would never have to leave his crown and his royal robes and come down here and spend three and a half years being hated and talked about. If it was neither that we might know about God, that we see God walking, then it's needful for him to be the same yesterday for somebody to take his place. So he made it. This is the form of somebody. 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 Need me to touch people like he touched them. Somebody needs to have enough God in them to touch somebody. Y'all ain't hear me. Now, as I said before, I was this great theologian. I could not deny that God was still able to heal. Because I knew God's ability hadn't changed. But one day, my middle daughter, I need to tell you, because all y'all haven't heard this, I haven't told you a long time, Margareta was sick. And had been sick going on the second day. I was working in rentals, came home in construction now, in construction. At that time, back in the 1960s, they were talking about uh, about the 1959s. Uh, they were 1960. They were talking about uh, all of a sudden doctors would not come out to see you. Y'all don't remember that day. You could not call a doctor if you uh, the doctor, even your personal doctor, would not come out to see you at night. And we didn't even have a personal doctor. Came home. And Mom Blue said, said uh, uh, Gret already had this bad cold. Gret, whenever she would get sick, she would be sick. And we knew Gret was sick because Gret had been all day and not said a word. I let, and Gret had to be sick. See, I left home that morning. Gret couldn't hardly breathe. Gret was cold. But I came back, and Mom Blue said, we got to do something. I ain't had no money, didn't have no doctor, didn't have no insurance. And, but I said, See, God's sometimes, we wonder why these things are happening so you can find out, that, so you go to him to find out that he's still the same when, not, when, not, when nothing else will help or when everything has failed, when you, when nothing, when you, can't, when you can't go. That's his opportunity to say, hey, don't cry. You don't need John Hopkins. I'm here. The doctor's just going to give you an aspirin and maybe shoot you up with an antibiotic. Oh, you know, there's really no cure for cold. Y'all ain't hearing me. And, and she said, look at me, she had pneumonia. And I said, I got, Mama said, you got to do something. All I knew was to take her in another room, sit on my lap, and a little voice spoke to me. I had to look it up later on. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all of a sudden, my thinking fell in place. I said to myself, and I said to God, I said, now, Jesus, I believe that when you laid hands on those little children, 
uh, whatever, even though they couldn't say what was wrong with him, I don't believe you just touch him and pat him on the head and say, you pretty or you handsome. I believe that when you touch them, something happened to them just like it happened to adults if they need it. And so I said, now, uh, I want the same Jesus. All of a sudden, I began to put one and one together and two and two together and, and two and one together came out with the Trinity. And I said, now, if that's, if, see, you got to believe what the Bible says is true. I said, okay, that's Bible. That's Holy Ghost writ. Uh, so the same Jesus that walked the Sea of Galilee, the same Jesus that walked the shores of Galilee, that reached out and touched the sick, God, I want you to tell that same Jesus to reach out from heaven and lay your hands on this little baby. And I put my hand, something told me to put my hand on the head when I said that. And when I said, Jesus, I want you to touch it like I'm touching it. And all of a sudden, I felt her straight and stiff in her back. I was holding her, she was limp. I felt her stiff, and I looked, opened my eyes and looked down at her cheeks, and I could see the blood rushing to her cheeks. And I said, how you feel? For the first time she spoke, I said, all right. And I said, uh, uh, you want something to eat? She said, yes. You know, I mean, speaking strong and color rushing. I can see the color rushing to her cheek. Faster than, come on here, faster than a nanosecond. <laughs> I'm talking about what I saw. I'm talking about why do I believe because I saw God. I didn't see his hand. There wasn't nobody in that room. But me and God. Wasn't nobody there to give no shots. I didn't take it to no clinic, didn't take it to no doctor's office. And I know that if I take it to the doctor's office, that whatever they would have done, she wouldn't have just like that. Stop coughing. He wouldn't just like that. Feet would have left. Color wouldn't just rush to her cheek. I said, well, do you want anything to eat? She said, yes. I told mama, I said, cut up an orange. She ate one slice. Eat two slices. Ate a half orange. Ate a whole orange. And then I said, do you want to go in there where they're eating? She said, she jumped down and ran to the table and jumped in the high chair. Y'all didn't hear me. God, Jesus is still the same yesterday. And if you hang around here and believe, these signs shall follow them that believe. That even though he's invisible, you can reach out and touch him. Y'all ain't hearing me. If you have enough faith, if this here sinner woman uh, 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 could have enough faith for a daughter to get here, here come a Roman captain over a, a battalion of a hundred men who had legally killed probably a whole lot of Jews under command of the Roman army. He came to Jesus. He said, I have a son that's sick. He said, now what I want to do, I got to go on about my business. He said, I don't want you to take time out. It's too far to go back. I see you going another way. He said, but I just want you to speak the word. Uh, just send your word. He said, I'm a captain over a hundred men. If I say forward march, a hundred men will forward go forward march. If I say pull your sword and take your javelin out and kill everything or kill and be killed, they will do it. He said, I believe that you're captain over legions of angels. I believe that you have medicine in your voice. Speak the word. When the man got in Jesus, before the man left, Jesus said, I've never, all right, all you children of Abraham, Isaac, and isn't it bad? And many times you'll find out sinners, what we call sinners, can come to the church and believe in the preacher and believe in the altar call before somebody because we come up with so much doubt. You know where the doubt comes in? Well, I don't know whether or not he's a man of God or not. Because I heard and uh, I don't know whether or not healing going to take place because I heard that some of them deacons, oh, I heard that somebody, it, I done looked around, I done seen somebody. You know, one time somebody sat in church and somebody had a telephone and it had a reading on it. And they were 
talking on the telephone, receiving that message in church, and somebody looked at him and thought that the young preacher was up there playing a, like a Nintendo game on the screen in church. And all he was doing was looking at his telephone and reading his messages in, in script instead of, you know, listening to it. Y'all don't hear me. You know what I'm talking about. So sometimes the doubt that we have. And then if you have been doing wrong, uh, see, all this is stuff about, uh, uh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, see. The devil will work, again. come on here, come on here. Uh, it don't have to be doing nothing. There is sin of omission. You don't come to church, the devil going to use it on you. Uh, now, you know you ain't got the faith to be here. You'll never come to Bible study. You'll never come to Bible study. He will talk to you and tell you. Now, you can act like you're strong all you want to, but a little bit of doubt can grow big. Y'all ain't hearing me. So, but many times a sinner comes and he knows that I'm wrong. And he repents. But we sit up and do our wrong things and don't repent. I'm just as good as anybody else. Everybody else is doing it. He said, don't say nothing to the people around the front, around the side, around the back. Or the, he don't say, you don't know what I say. You don't know what I say. I preach enough damage you're going to hell if you don't live right out here in your faith. You act like don't nobody hear it, whether they obey. I can't make you obey. I can't lead the horse to water, and I can't make it swim because the horse don't have no swimming suit. Name my job to... I don't even lead you to the water. You come in. You say, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. It's not my job to grab a loaf of bread and cram it down your mouth and choke you. You said, bread of heaven.